Right, uh, hi everyone. Um, um, as you can see, we've got a um, ignition trigger assembly up on the bench. Uh, my brother, Bad Bob, is convinced that his Hall Effect trigger um, uh, or Hall Effect tr chip has uh, failed. So this is an old bean can I've got, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a new Hall Effect chip assembly into this bean, the bean cam. You can buy these on eBay for about 16 quid. Personally, I don't like a Hall Effect uh, Bosch Hall Effect devices. Uh, the chip actually is made, or well, what used was made by um, Honeywell. Um, uh, but I don't think they make them any longer but you can still buy them as I say we bought this on eBay for about 15 or 16 quid um, um, so it's a cheap way of um, of uh, repairing a, a bean can um, of course you can buy replacement electronic ignition systems uh, personally I prefer points um, as, which is what I've got in my GS and um, but anyway this is what we're going to do here uh, so the tools you're going to need for the job are um, a screwdriver one or two assorted picks a little punch very essential a small hammer very essential pair of pliers some uh, circuit pliers here, small ones and some big circuit pliers and a slide hammer so or, or a little puller, little slide hammer or a little puller um, to um, get it apart so that's what we need I think this um, um, Hall Effect device he got off of eBay actually came from Bulgaria and is probably made in China um, so uh, we'll see how it goes um, so quite a looks exactly the same as uh, the original Honeywell type one I'll uh, give details of the part number the Honeywell part number um, uh, somewhere on this video okay well let's get started uh, the other essential I forgot to mention you probably can't see it here uh, you might be able to is a bit of fishing wire that's very important as well right so these Hall Effect devices um, replace the contact breaker points in the electronic ignition system and uh, they act as a switch it uh, consists of a um, uh, piece of conductor material um, it, it, it could be metal it could be copper uh, but it isn't uh, the reason it isn't is because the material which is actually used is a semiconductor and you get a much stronger effect using a semiconductor than you do with a piece of metal but anyway uh, so you, you, you've got this um, uh, semiconductor here uh, and on the opposite side but you've got a, ma a magnet on this side which you can see if I touch it with something metal there's a permanent magnet there and um, we've got uh, which is opposite um, in this case a semiconductor piece of material and um, there's a uh, chopper blade which you'll see when I dismantle the um, the bean can uh, uh, interrupts metal chopper interrupts the magnetic field and um, that causes a change in um, the current uh, the direction that the current flows um, across the semiconductor so I'll go into that a little bit more um, a little later but there it is just that's what just replaces the the contact breaker points so to get this apart we need to take the um, um, 
end off the bean can. Need a posi drive screw, number two posi drive screwdriver to do this. Um, then you need to remove the shaft support at the front end and just lifts out um, then you need to remove this um, big circlip followed by this e-clip here that comes apart okay so once you've done that you need to remove this little metal window that comes off and inside you can see I hope you can see um, there are some bob weight springs in there okay they are attached to the bob weights so that's your automatic advance and retard mechanism so you just need to work those off those outer pins um, like that there's two of them one there and one there and then you need to take these three screws out around the edge of the cylinder And you also need to take this little plastic peg out, plastic peg there, and then you can remove, hopefully, the whole assembly from this shaft. So this whole assembly here, the internal assembly, is going to slide up that shaft, I hope. Sometimes they can be um, stuck on. Oh, this one's coming up okay. You need to slide this um, plastic locator, cable locator, up at the same time. Well, it all started to move. Now it's stopped. Here we go. I'm just pushing up. There we go. Got to work the whole thing up along with this cable retainer. Gently, carefully. There we go. There's the assembly out there. You can see the bob weights inside. That remain as part of the shaft we can put that to one side and there's the hall effect trigger there's the chopper okay and now you need to remove this circlip here Just removed. Now this is the bit where you need to use the slide hammer. The thing you need to be aware of with this 
is that there's a tiny tiny little pin just there um, that comes off with this chopper assembly there's the chopper okay so that needs to come off so the way I'm going to do that well just before I do that you can see there's the bob weight springs there that we lifted off so to get that apart what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clamp that gently in the vise and I'm going to attach my slide hammer here you can do this with a puller I choose to do it with a slide hammer I'm going to put my hand underneath because I want to catch that pin so you can see it's coming up there we go right So there's, there's that tiny little pin, keep that safe, there's the chopper, and now you can see the um, assembly of the, um, of the um, Hall Effect trigger. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and take out these two screws underneath. One. Well, I'll just leave that one in for the moment because I've jumped, jumped the gun a bit here. What I should be doing next is taking this circlip off So there's that circlip off. Right, now that shaft can come through. Okay, that's where it is with the two bob weight springs on. So we'll put that to one side. Right, back to the back side of the um, assembly. So we've got one screw out, we'll take this other screw out. And then we can separate this top to top plate from the bottom plate. And you might need to just pry it a little bit with a screwdriver. They can corrode on sometimes. Uh, so we're separating this upper plate from the uh, upper plate from the lower plate. So there's a pin on the upper plate that locates in the lower plate, so it only goes on in one position. And as I was saying, you sometimes need to give it a little bit of persuasion with um, by prying it with a screwdriver. But be careful; don't want to damage the um, or distort the plates should come apart quite easily just going to nip that in the vise there like that so I've got two hands free and uh, so we can use couple of screwdrivers just to, there we go, there we go, that's it, okay, so this is the, uh, the bit we want to work on, and um, 
what we're going to need to do now is um, to just unclip these cables and then we need to get the Hall Effect trigger off so I'm just looking at the new one looks to me like the ones on the old one have been peened over so I think we're going to have to drill those off and then find some way of locating the new one in position so I'm just using a 3mm drill here to uh, drill out the rivets I find um, a hand drill gives me a little bit more control over what I'm doing use a little bit bigger drill I think so I've just got an upper size in drill there we go So there's the old Hall Effect trigger off. There's the new Hall Effect trigger. 